Hey everybody! Well, you know, we have been sitting on this footage now for quite a while. Actually, we came across this boat last year when we were shopping for a different boat. It is such a great design that we have decided we should give it some stage time here. Hence, um, this episode, we ended up not buying it. Why not? Well, more about that later. <laughs> straight to the chase um, the reason why we end up not buying this boat wasn't that it wasn't any good or something like that it just didn't come with a whole lot of equipment the logistics were difficult around it where it was etc and it was uh, twice as expensive as the old day 28 that we found which was uh, about the same size or a bit older but more affordable to us at the time Nevertheless, it is a fantastic boat, so let's have a closer look. So these are the keel boats. <clears throat> they are super massive. And here, this here is a grounding plate. So the entire rig is grounded through this grounding plate. That's the way it should be. And this on an inner liner that is completely tied up with a hull. So uh, a perfect monocon structure. A modern design, that is why the boat is so light and so strong. No worries, I'll let her back out, I promise. Maybe. It is so nice and so clean. Yeah, it's, cozy. it's pretty cozy. Yeah, the chain plates. So they tie into the into blocks into the lower liner here. There's a there's an ice box here. There's plenty of storage here. We have a gimlet stove and oven here. Let's put them here. Also. Yeah. You know, but I thought it actually looked nicer than the way he described it. Sounded like, oh, that's what he meant with the liner coming down here. Okay. That's why we have some rotten water damage here. Okay. That needs to be repaired. But it is um, an easy repair because, see, she only got a headliner up here and the rest is actually all just glued in liner, same like here. So, here's a shower pan. That's right everybody, all the floor fittings have already modern or above style seacocks on them, as it should be. And that's by the way from the factory, that's Benetton. There's plenty of storage here, but no standing headroom in here. And then here's another engine access panel right here. I believe it is. Let's see. I can get this to. Oh, yeah, engine access. 
from all sides. And also here. Yeah. From both sides and the front. So the engine is a Volvo Penta two cylinder. That looks good. Yep, engine access is actually really good for a boat of this size. Oh, wine cabinet. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Before we take it any further, let's have a quick look at her specifications and performance calculations. The first 285 is a fin keel spade rudder design. There have been different keel designs available also, but more about that later. She is a fractional sloop, which means that the forestay ends clearly underneath the mast top. It doesn't go all the way up. So it allows you to bend the mast a little bit for rig tuning with your backstay tensioner. She has been made from fiberglass, has a lead keel and was in production from 1985 to 1993. The builder is Benetton out of France and the designer is the group Finot. They made 451 of those throughout that production run. Yes, everybody, she is a French girl. There's great engineering coming out of France. They have a strong automotive industry, for instance, with Peugeot, Renault, Citroën, the Créateur d'Automobile, known for the famous duck. The car that would never break out or roll out of a curve. Well, it might break out, but you cannot roll it, basically, was the thing. And they made the Eiffel Tower, yes. So, in yacht design, there is Beneteau, Genot, and a couple of others, and especially those two have been around for a couple of decades and still are. So, they know how to make stuff. But back to the boat. So the first 285 for Beneteau is 28.16 feet long, you see metric here to the right, and she has a long water line for a total length at 24.25. Sail area at a little bit more than 340 square foot, and the beam is at 9.83 on the dot 3 meters wide. She's a beamy boat. Displacement you can see is only 6,160 pounds, which is super light for a boat of this size. And I uh, pointed that out to you already when we toured the boat here, how well they put the monocoque structure together, the inner liner and so forth and so on. So it makes it for a very, very light but yet strong um, construction. The so ballast is at 2115, also not very heavy. And uh, the draft is with a standard Finke 5.25. There was also a shore draft available at 3.75 and a wing keel at 3.8. All right, let's look at the performance calculations. The sail area to displacement at 16.29 is not over canvassed, and her ballast to displacement at almost 35. Is on the low end, so it uh, is not designed to be a pure racer, obviously, as you can load it up a little bit more for cruising. Displacement to length is clearly under 200 and super light for both of this size, and the comfort ratio, therefore, uh, doesn't even come in at 18 because she is that light. Capsize screening formula at 2.15 indicates that she has never been intended to be used as an IOR, offshore racer, or any of that. This here is your club racer, coastal cruiser, a boat for relatively protected waters or some um, coastal cruising, that's about it. But she's fast at a 2.70, so high speed at 6.6. .6. Again, from that long water line, um, they got that speed, and that's pretty impressive. Light boat, long water line, 6.6 .6 knots high speed, that's sweet and pounds uh, per inch immersion at 851.75 that is how much you can put in before she goes down the first inch she is powered by a volvo diesel auxiliary engine you could either have a 9 or 18 horsepower the fuel tank is relatively small at only 7.1 gallons or 27 liters and her water tank is at 26.4 exactly 100 liters Another indication that she was never intended to be a passage maker or any of that, uh, but she is well capable again for weekend and coastal cruising and so forth and so on. It's also a very modern layout as you can see here. You got two front hatches, a main companion way hatch, you got a decent bridge deck, then that has been set back into the companion way entrance. 
like what you would see with modern races. And she even, she even has a sugar scoop transom, which is really nice. If you try to get into your dinghy, you can stand on that. And um, another modern design that you find in any modern yacht these days is a typical um, head, either to starboard or port, but aft of the boat, not forward. And then they used here port for a double size uh, aft stateroom that is separate. And she even has a two burner stove and oven gimbaled in an L shaped galley. Um, the salon is a little bit short bench wise, but there's even an aft station desk and a decent sized V burst that also closes up, makes another separate cabin. So they've somehow managed here to create a boat that has three separate cabins in only 28 feet of length, a little over. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, the boat was built by Benetton in France, as we mentioned, and the United States also. So the French people bring good stuff to the United States, like, uh, well, the Statue of Liberty, essentially, or baguette and croissant. Although that's much better in France, to be honest with you. What do you think? Yeah, let's get back to the tour. The boat has a pretty decent sized cockpit locker to starboard, which is actually pretty spacious and deep. As you can see here, the cockpit benches are slanted, so that you sit upright once the boat starts healing. It looks like this boat was initially designed for tiller steering, hence there is no cutout for a steering wheel, as you can see here, so you have to climb up on the benches and move around the wheel somehow. Another fairly modern design feature is the companionway entrance, I think, as it is pushed back into the coach roof, creating a wide and deep bridge deck that's fairly high, and has even a port light for ventilation of the aft cabin in the middle underneath it. I'd say a cockpit room all in all is adequate for a boat of this size, uh, however the benches are relatively narrow, not quite wide enough to lay down on them. The stanchions have been moved all the way inboard towards the coach roof, the side stays here, so it allows you to sheet in really tight that you can point high with this boat. There's two forward deck hedges and there's even enough space for life raft in front of the mast. And all the lines are leading aft into the cockpit. And there's also, of course, an anchor locker up front, and it is actually of decent size also. This one looks a little messy, though. Now, should you get one of these boats? Well, maybe not this one in particular here that looks a little bit weathered and worn, bad example. But let's say if you are in the market for a good old sailboat. Um, a fairly modern design that performs well and as you can see here with that round hull shape she likes to heal early, sail very nimble, it's a light and very strong boat that gives you a lot of modern design features like for instance a three cabin layout that gives you a lot of privacy uh, with the head all the way aft in the boat and even a modern sugar scoop transom yes people she does have that too and they range somewhere from 15 to 30 grand depending on age equipment and so forth and so on i'd say yes get one so if that was helpful please like share and subscribe as always and also don't forget to hit this little bell icon so you will be notified whenever we release new footage as always thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one cheers